You are listening to the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Now, in today's episode, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by listeners and viewers just like you. Yeah. Uh, that happened at the end of this podcast. At the beginning of the podcast, the first 42 minutes, we do this intro portion where we talk about current events. We bring up scientific studies. We talk about our sponsors. I'm going to give you a rundown of today's entire episode. So we open up by talking about Adam's son's hair. Mm. Looks like Adam wins the battle again. Uh, gets to cut his boy's hair. Uh, then I talk about my skin. Um, it's looking really good. You can see this on YouTube actually right now if I go like this. Mm -hmm. Look at that skin right there. Super radiant. That's because I've been using Caldera's face serum. This stuff is all natural and it actually really works. Uh, Justin, in fact, threw it on his face and now it looks amazing. I'm your inspiration. Didn't think he could get any more handsome, but he did. Uh, by the way, Mind Pump has a discount with them. Go check them out. Go to calderalab.com forward slash Mind Pump. So that's C-A-L-D-E-R-A-L-A-B.com forward slash Mind Pump. And then use the code Mind Pump. You'll get 20% off uh, your first order. Then we talk about video games and how much we played as kids. Uh, I talk about how California now is reopening. It's like it just changed their mind overnight. It's really it's weird. It's magical. Then we talk about in Washington, D.C., overweight people will be getting priority for the vaccine. Uh, then we talk about the, the woman who stabbed mm. her husband because she saw a picture of him with someone else. Listen to the episode to find out who it was. Yeah. Surprise. Surprise. Uh, then we talk about the documentary on Amazon called Crazy Not Insane. Really scary, crazy stuff. Uh, we talk about the McGregor fight over the weekend. We talk about Tom Brady, uh, the second best quarterback of all time. <laughs> <laughs> then we talk about the UCLA gymnast who uh, she did her act to, I think it was Tupac and someone else. It went viral. It's really cool. Uh, we talked about Doug's meat strategies. He's got some incredible meat strategies. Makes them he taste knows all about that meat. really good, which led us to talk about ButcherBox, another one of our sponsors. Right now, if you sign up for ButcherBox, here's what you get. I'm not making this up. This is true now. You get a rack of St. Louis ribs, one pack of pulled pork, and a pack of bacon for free. For free. Damn. In your first box. They deliver grass-fed meat to your door. No middleman. It's good stuff. Go check them out. ButcherBox.com forward slash mind pump to get that uh, that hookup. Uh, then we talk about how Justin is the magnet of farts. Yeah, <laughs> That's right. Apparently. Then we get into the questions. Here's the first one. This person wants us to talk about isometric exercises. What's their value? So we talk about that. The next question, this person wants to know what we think about DNA, fitness, and nutrition tests. The third question, this person wants to know uh, what the deal is with multi-grip bars for bench pressing. And then the final question, this person says, look, uh, you know, what do I do? I don't want to eat any more food. I don't, I'm not that hungry but I need more calories based on my goals. So we give some strategies there. Also, all month long, uh, we're running a promotion where we took multiple workout programs, MAPS programs, and put them together for the beginner or for somebody who's taking a long break and wants to get back into fitness. Here's what you get with this bundle. You get MAPS Starter. That's the program you start with. So get going there. After you complete that program, which is about two months long, then you start MAPS Anabolic. Then Muscle really starts to come on your body. Strength goes up. Metabolism really kicks into high gear. That's a three-month program. Then you have MAPS Prime, which teaches you how to prime your body before your workout, superior to warming up. This prevents uh, injuries, gets you to move better, improves your strength output. Um, and you also get an intuitive nutrition guide, uh, which is included to help you with your diet. Uh, by the way, there's three days left as of the, the dropping of this episode for this particular promotion. Normally, when you sign up for all those, the retail price would be $340. Right now, you get all of them in the starter bundle for $80. That's it, $80, and you get lifetime access to all of those programs, plus a 30-day money-back guarantee. You literally have nothing to lose except for maybe some belly fat. Some LBs. Go to mapsjanuary.com. That's M-A-P-S, january.com, to go check it out. Dad one. Wifey zero. Uh oh. Well, that whole family is probably. What'd you do? Ugh. Yeah, What'd yeah. You do? I'm, I'm on the outs right now for uh, sure. I cut my son's fucking hair. Like I said, oh, it was going to happen. Wait, did you tell her or did you just do it? No, of course I did. Of course I did. She knew it was going to happen. Like, I mean, we've been talking about it for like the last couple of weeks. The ponytail thing was like the last, the, the last so, straw for me. 
Oh yeah, she started putting it. <laughs> People yeah. have putting it up in a bun. I don't know, like, guys oh, with ponytails. Just there's a, there's something about. I can't them, do right it, now. man. You got to cut it. I, I feel you on that, dude. I would have a hard. The only time guy, only guy that gets away with it, Steven Seagal. It's the only one that can wear the the bun. Hey, the it just <laughs> well, yeah. and it was getting to a point where it was like you know it's it's growing over his ears and it's you know it's all super long in the back. It's falling in his eyes like you can't. His hair, it's not like it's curly and puffy to where it's still okay. He's got the straight hair. Yeah, he's got the straight hair that like hangs in his eyes. So the whole time I'm like wiping it away. Okay, from- so give a little backstory. There's a Katrina's family has a well, tradition. For, okay, yeah, first though, before that, because I was having this conversation with a, a friend of mine and they're like, um, and, and the lady who cut his hair was like, I didn't tell her until after we started that, yeah, wife isn't really happy about this. Um, so Katrina and I have been together 10 years and we've talked, I swear, everything. I mean, Religion, politics, uh, schooling, uh, discipline, uh, communication. Like we cover, I thought we covered all the bases, <laughs> right? I thought for sure she kept this one. A this secret. one snuck in, huh? Yeah, and you She's know, like, he'll deal with it when it happens, right? Yeah. Like it wasn't yeah. even, it wasn't even, it was never brought up. It was never conversation. I didn't, I don't know uh, her little. Her she has two older brothers. Uh, that I guess this was the family tradition that they don't cut the hair for four years. Oh, four years? Four years. Wow. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah. It's a very long time. How long does a hair get? Holy cow. Yeah, yeah. No, really long. I mean, obviously, like, force it to be in ponytail long. I mean, it mm-hmm. was already, he was already at, what, you were at a year and a half, and, you know, it got to a point where you'd have to kind of put it up in this, like, you know, ponytail thing just to keep it from being in his eyes, like, 24-7 and getting in the way. So, and up until that point, like, I wanted to cut, like, two maybe two three months ago it was already getting to a point where it was like that to me where it was in his eyes and over his ears i was like uh oh, let's let's go let's clean it up at least right and so it was like this constant like fight back and forth and i think she she finally just you know said and my, the way i said it I said listen you know we plan to try and have a second one so uh, whatever i'll let you do whatever you want on the second one but my firstborn boy <laughs> you gotta you gotta let me let, let me cut his hair man like you got i, I had no idea this was like you a, did the you did you just did the wear her down clothes yeah i did I was, yeah. persistent i was very persistent <laughs> about it but i also got I, her drunk first hey, honey have some yeah, drink i was also you know let's talk about this i was aware that this is this well and after the fact right that it was a family tradition like nobody was going to be happy with me with the family um, but I don't know, like I, I, I always imagined having a boy and when I had a boy that I would want to cut his hair and dress him and do those things. Like, uh, maybe some guys. That's don't why you played know. with dolls when you were a kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. You practice a lot. Yeah. Like I got a real one now. Let me do this. <laughs> right. Right. Why? Uh, so did, yeah. did the family get mad? Did they find out? Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know if they were mad and maybe disappointed, you know, maybe it was similar to like when Katrina didn't get the ring on her 40th. <laughs> it was probably like that same similar feeling. I'm just not winning right now. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just doing your own thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, uh, now is it, is there a superstition behind it? Like, is it like Samson's hair? No. Like, like it's good love. No, yeah. it's not. There's no religious thing and it, behind and it. Started no, with her brothers, as far as I know. Yeah. Okay, so it's not like this. Oh, for the last seven generations, we, yeah. you broke the chain. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was like tradition. Come on. You mean your two brothers didn't cut their hair? I had to compromise like that with uh, my older, my two older kids because in in my family, and this goes back generations. I mean, as far back as we know, the firstborn son and daughter are named after the mother and father of the groom. So like I'm named after my grandfather, so so then my son would be named after my dad, my daughter would be named after my mom. Well, uh, this was a big area of contention, and it was back and forth. Back and so the the we the way we compromised was, we'll do it with the firstborn, and then the secondborn. Then we'll just name, you know, whatever I want. Oh. So I, I so I said okay, but um, but yeah, that's that that was a long standing tradition, which is why you guys have been around some of my family members before. Uh-huh. I've gotten the comments of like, why is there three names in your whole family? You know, yeah. like if you go to a family party and you yell like Giuseppe, yeah, like four people will turn around. <laughs> hey, yeah, which yeah, I would yeah. think would be so annoying. Yeah. Uh. Well, everybody has a nickname. Okay, so there's Sep, there's Joey, there's Giuseppe, there's Joker. Like there's a there's like a million different nicknames. Like <laughs> mine. Like it, it, when I go to Italy, especially because that's where my dad's. Imagine family the is. poor wives that marry into this family, like uh, trying to remember all that. There's a lot of wins too. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I do is remember three names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. pretty, pretty good. That's it. Yeah. No, but like in, in Italy, because my dad's family's over there, there's so many Sal's. Everybody's first born because my grandfather had a lot of kids. Mm-hmm. So there's I'm Sal because in America Sal's in Italy they don't use Sal, but then there's Toto, Turi, 
Made No Sasa. Like these are all nicknames for for Sal <laughs> for the same yeah. day. It's hard to really? spell that out. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I know. Isn't wow. that funny? Yeah. That's yeah. why my dad's my dad's name is Mimo, but his na- real name is Domenico, and Domenico is too many. Oh, really I, so I didn't realize that you got you did both your your first and second born. No, my second born that was the compromise. That my second born that if we do it with the first, then the second born is you know whatever we want to name. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah so, so just Domenico is named after. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And oh, you know, speaking of kids, uh, I this I I totally I don't remember this or I forgot, but you know how kids they change so quickly, especially when they're really young. Like literally within a week, your kid is just yeah, different. It just transforms. Yeah. It in the same day it happened yesterday. Wow. <laughs> I, no, no, I'm serious. I was playing with my son. Yesterday was a weekend. We're hanging out and playing with the baby, whatever. That night, he all of a sudden became super vocal and just different. And uh, Jessica and I were just like, what is going on? This kid completely changed from this morning. In the past few days, he's been super cranky. Obviously, he's going through this growth spurt or something. Right. And then his pajamas that fit him like the day before don't like are almost don't fit anymore. Yeah. In one just day. rapid growth. It's crazy. Yeah. It's insane yeah, yeah. when that happens. No, I noticed that right now too. Like he, his, his face is changing a lot right now. Like between who he looks yeah. more like. There's days where I feel like he looks spot on. To He's starting mom. to not look like a baby anymore. You know what I mean? Where they go from like infant to baby. So to that like was the toddler. biggest. That was the biggest thing in contention with his family is like they all want to like keep him the baby boy for as long as they can, and they know that the haircut makes him look so much older right mm-hmm. away. And so that was part of the pushback is like Katrina. Why Katrina wanted me to stall as long as I did was because she's like. I don't want to cut his hair. Then all of a sudden, he looks like a full-grown toddler. Like, yeah. but I'm like, he is a toddler. So yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Like, let's find. It's fine for him. To oh do God, that. are you gonna have like? Old I gave school? him fades like right away. <laughs> Did yeah. you really? Oh yeah, yeah. No. I love buzz cuts on cute on little Dude, boys. Dude, yeah. Cute. I don't know why. It's just that's always been like I just can't stand having any kind of like long neck hair, anything <laughs> resembling. Hair. Yeah, yeah. It's just like it's it's. I don't know. It's very clear cut. Like it's you know you know. Anyways, yeah. like I, that's just how I, I was brought up. I, it, it looks really clean on on their on their faces. It's very fifties. I you used know, to like, sh- it's almost like a flat top. I yeah. used to shave my head when I did jujitsu, but it was purely function, mm. and I loved the way it felt. Didn't look good. Oh though. yeah, I don't look good with a shaved head. Yeah, I, I, uh, <laughs> Justin agrees real quick. Yeah, uh, Justin yeah. looks great with a shave. He's got a big ass head, so when you shave it, it looks like a juggernaut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. But I can't do it because it's like everybody. I don't know. It's a little too like aggressive looking. You know, I end up like like looking like some kind of neo Nazi or something. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I don't have enough. I don't have enough of a tan to pull it off. Yeah, you, you know? got to get the tan, dude. Yeah, I got to get tan. Anyway, dude, you you sold me on uh, Caldera, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah, because I, I was seeing what it was doing. His ashy you. ass is it, wearing it now. I mean, Are you using it completely transformed his face. <laughs> it is. It's amazing. So now here's the reason why I, I my skin I've never had issues with, and I I tend to be more on the oily side anyway. Yeah, and so I'm thinking, you know, I don't need to use anything or whatever, but it balanced out my skin. So it actually helped with that. Mm-hmm. So it's like yours was dry, and it made it more moist. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Moist that, and plush. I know. Oh, no, I should not be like, allowed to descriptors. I'm yeah, trying, to think, of those in there. I'm trying to think of a better word. <laughs> yeah. I am pretty moist. Uh, yeah. Now that you mentioned it. Yeah. No, <laughs> not, and, but it balanced mine out. Now it looks like you know, it makes it look all you know good. Yeah, you guys don't have to give me compliments or anything. No, it's all right. Screw yeah. you guys. There's no crow's feet yeah. or yeah. You know. No, you do. You look good. <laughs> you look, I, it's you know, and you're all shaved up right now too, so you can see all of it. You mm-hmm. look gorgeous right now. Yeah, yeah oh. you're, you're going for that youthful look. It's now, not the I same see. because I asked you to say something. Mm. <laughs> I brought. Uh, I, had to, I had to invite you. Do him. I look more handsome? Uh, yes, yes, you do. Yes, yeah. you do. Yes, do, I, you do. Do I look any better? You totally do. Anyway, hey, you were up at uh, Tahoe this weekend. Yeah, how was that? It was great. So Everett's birthday was uh, this week, and we decided, like, let's do something fun, you know, because it's been so hard for him because all of his friends' parents are super hysterical about everything, and so, like, they just won't let, you know, him interact with their kids, and so... Uh, we, we decided to go up and then like some of his cousins were able to make it up and we went, uh, skiing and everything. So I had a great time. Snowed a little bit, uh, one of the days so we had a fresh coat of powder and everything. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, so we hit it up. Uh, yeah, it was a good time. What'd you do for his birthday? What was his gift? Um, so I got him a switch, uh, Nintendo switch. Oh yeah. Ah. Yeah. I thought cause... you guys already had that. No. Uh-uh. Oh, I didn't know that. No. Y- y- you get, you got to play Mario Kart with them and just kill them. Yeah, I, I need to get that, but they have Mario Maker on there, and that's why I got it because it's like it's super creative. Like you, you can go through and like basically do all the Mario style 
um, mm. you know, games and, and create your own levels and everything. So uh, yeah, I got sucked in. I was surprised you didn't hit me up to grab the Xbox because I've been I brought it I brought it back from Vegas. Oh, I didn't know you had it. Hey, yeah, have yeah. you have you tried it? I just did. What, yeah. So, so is, this it, weekend, is it worth the? What's the yeah. best game on there? Well, I I so I downloaded uh, uh, Madden and NBA. So that's I'm not into all the other shit. You have to you have to fucking buy all the other games. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not into like the, <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm not in the first player Star Wars like you oh, know adventure cool. games. I'm into, I love that shit. Yeah, I'm into the sports. So that's all you're gonna get me playing. But you know it's funny because. Uh, I mean, I haven't since Katrina and I have been together. I haven't played like I mean intermittently, right? So if my my two high school friends and I we get together, we'll play uh, every like once in a while. And you know, I haven't had a console in my house in a in a really long time. And uh, I had a little bit of time. And Max went down to bed, and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, if I'm gonna fire it up, download some, play some game. video games. Yeah, yeah, play some video games, dude. <laughs> I have I have it's crazy to me how sophisticated it is now. And what I mean by that is so. You, uh, if you're at like the at least the sport games, right? So basketball and football, you know, not only do you have to be good with your 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 hand your hands, right? Like as far as your reactions and and be able to work eight ten different buttons, right, all simultaneously. But now they've evolved these games to where you got to know you got to know the sport, you got to know the coaching level, like you got to know how to call plays. I got to be able to come up the court or down the field, read a defense, mm-hmm. and then know what plays to call. In addition to, Jeez. yeah, in addition to knowing how to watch thr- the future, like best yeah, coaches be guess. like. You imagine that the future coaches will be like. Well, I so I mean, it's if I was a kid, I would geek out on this big time. I think it's yeah. I think it's really really cool. But as for an old guy like me who who has played in so many years what sucks about it is i'm playing right and i'm 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 like going through and like i'm checking it all out and seeing like oh wow you can call these plays and i can do this and mm-hmm. right bumper left up down this and that all i'm like trying to figure it out i'm like jesus the amount of hours i would need to put oh, into yeah. this to get actually really good with it to where i could memorize be playing the game live memorize like oh i want to call a screen for this guy right. and do a back cut right. here this done, these types of blitzes oh, on the outside yeah now can you hook it up so that it's live so you could play yeah. other kids yeah oh dude you just get your ass kicked by some 10 oh i would i would yeah. for sure that like knows how to do all oh that. yeah last night when i was hanging out with my kids and uh i was talking to my son and he's just you know he's 15 so he'll just sit there and not say anything for hours <laughs> so i'm like trying to get him to like start conversation so i'm like dude tell me about you know an easy way to get him to talk is to have him explain video game strategies so, oh, like, yeah. okay. all right <laughs> so he plays this i forgot the name of it but it's this first person shooter and it's huge and people go online Call of and, duty uh no it's a different one. Oh. so i'm like expl- i said are, when you're playing with your friends do you guys have strategies and he's like of course I'm like, explain the strategies. Dude, this kid went on a 45-minute dissertation of <laughs> – yeah. Dude, it is complex. Yeah, I, I know, I'm like, man. I'm like, so are you sitting there calling out like the plays or whatever? And he goes, oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'll say so, – you know, and I'm making words up because he said a bunch of stuff I forgot. He's like, I'll be like midline blue, and that means this over here and this over there, depending on what the enemy's doing. If the terrorist is over here, then we say this, and then this happens over here. Then we sacrifice this play. And he's going on forever, and I'm just <laughs> – I'm doing the head nod like to show that I'm actively listening, but yeah. I'm like, I have no idea – yeah. What this kid's talking about right now. I mean, it used to be oh, when you were a whole kid, level. you you figure out the the four buttons or so that you need to use. Two, when yeah. I play. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I got dude. the Switch. Like, I actually do that mainly for me. Because yeah. it's like easy, dude. <laughs> it's, like, it's very straightforward. <laughs> no, this bullshit, dude. I don't have time for that. Yeah. I see, though, how you get sucked into these things, though. Because, again, if, you, if you're really into the sport, right? If you're really into basketball, you're really into football, and you appreciate that side of it, man. Oh, it, totally. Yeah. It's actually great training. I mean, uh-huh. if you, I mean, if you're a kid coming up, in high school or even younger, mm-hmm. and you want to learn about basketball or football, and you, to, if you to get good at that game, you got to learn that. You got to mm-hmm. learn how to read defenses and then how to call plays. In addition to the, the skill of playing the game, which, it's yeah. it, it's it's insane. It's insane what what they do with these uh, these games. And these kids are so fast. And yeah. I don't know. Have you ever tried watching? A kid who's really good play one of these shooters and not get dizzy by looking at the it's, TV screen. It's so yeah, it's so fast and everything is like like happening. Just it like cuts the cuts of it all is just like too much. It's yeah. almost like you know I, I'm sure there's been a lot more cases of like seizures and everything with these new Jeez. games. Well, this is why I think that like Twitch and everything blew up was because the game is so sophisticated now. 
that that's one of the best ways for you to learn as a kid. So I under, I get it more now, right? Originally, when I first saw, it, I'm like, who the hell sits down and watches somebody else play a video game for two yeah. hours? That is just a stupid. It's like watching yeah, they someone play sports. It. Yeah, it's almost like it, well, back then we had like Game Pro or, or whatever. Nintendo. Like, what was it Nin- called? Uh, yeah, yeah Game, Pro, Pro. Game Pro. It was, yeah, it was, what it was, was a magazine. Yeah, but Nintendo Power. That was the first. Oh, one. Oh, Power. That's remember right. that? Yeah. Uh, you know, my that. my brother wrote to them and they published his letter. No, <laughs> they did. No way. When he was a little kid. You gotta find that. You gotta see if you can. He find saved it. He did. Yeah. Oh, you gotta bring that in. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's hilarious. He was a fanatic. Yeah. And then, then I was asking him about Minecraft because when he was younger, he played that like crazy. And uh-huh. you guys know, on that game, they can build. There's some kids have built entire like, you know, the you death can build Star. games in there. You know, the Death Star. Yeah. Kids have built the Death Star in to Minecraft. Scale. To scale. Like and yeah. everything. I know. So I asked my son. I said, "Have you ever built anything crazy?" Yeah. He's like, "Oh yeah, let me show you." And him and his buddy built this like the space station with it. I mean, I looked at it and I'm like, this is insane. How long did this take? He's like, oh, we, we, we spent about two weeks on it. Yeah. Just building the whole thing. Yeah. That's my oldest. He does the same thing. Minecraft. He's like super obsessed with that kind of stuff. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. He made like a whole yeah. roller coaster ride that went on forever and ever. It was like a whole amusement park. Yeah. I did. Now you, Justin, you were probably more into video games than Sal was. Like I really believed I was going to play forever. Like there, were, I did not think. Of, <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, I really believe that. Like, <laughs> like I you really, were going to stop playing. Well, yeah, just, because I was in my yeah. okay in my twenties. He's like, my girl's going to have to understand. This is what I do. <laughs> no, bro, <laughs> he was like that. that. I remember when he was like that. I was, was like yeah. that. I think just would, I remember breaking up with a girl one time because yes. she was throwing yes. a fit when we were playing video games. No way. Yeah, yeah so I remember we, that. So it was a big deal. You so, broke up with her. Yes, <laughs> like in the middle of playing because she was causing because she was throwing a fit about it. Right. So we had the reason why she was get out. I don't want to be with you anymore. Yes, dude. It was just like that. So I'm like uh, 20, oh, 25 Oh my God, you're 25? Yeah, so I'm like, 20, oh I'm like 25, right? And at my house- I wonder if she's looking back and going, oh, that's a good thing. I'm glad he broke yeah. up with me. What the yeah, hell? Yeah, right? So okay, so we had, um, at, back then, this was big screen TVs, right? We didn't have the, I mean, this is a, like right as the plasmas were coming on scene. But I had the old school, like, you know, big old big screens, right? That were, I think, like 60 inches was like the biggest back then. And I had one in my living room and I had one in my bedroom. And we used to play these games like Call of Duty and stuff. And then we would hook up two systems and then we'd all be playing. So one guy would be back in the master bedroom. and And so she was so mad. She lived with me. Because there was no available TV in the house, and then we would <laughs> on a Saturday we could go eight hours, dude, just uh, all day. So she long. screwed. Yeah, so she was so mad. Grab your shit, get out. You know? Did she live with you? <laughs> yeah. Oh my, you kicked her out. Because yeah. You- <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Come on, it wasn't like I was that like crazy. Where it was just the video games. It was yeah. probably other things that were. I have no of idea. Course. Yeah. That, and now the tipping point was. But that's like, in her. Don't head. take I mean, the video game. That's the important thing. Yeah. Right yeah. There. Well, that's yeah, what it is. That was because, uh, and I have my I have my best friends there at that time, and that was like this was like a pack dude that we made when we were very young we're just like listen no girl yeah, gets in between that's us. right no girls get in between our video <laughs> game play. that's right and the, and the girls that we marry will understand this you know what i'm saying like this, we're not giving this up hey, so and we used to close ourselves because you got you got my two buddies okay i'm the only one that didn't finish college right they both have college degrees one of them's got a master's we all got good jobs everyone owns their homes you know and we're like you know, why shouldn't yeah, we be I'm able to- I'm not a degenerate. That's right. Exactly. Why well, yeah. I'm not a degenerate because I play video games for eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how we justified it. It really was. And so I had, what I think what got me to finally pull away, I had a buddy of mine who was, uh, let's see, Mark was like five or six years older than me. Uh, kind of like a mentor to me, right? Good, good friend. And he would always tell me like, dude, when are you going to give up the video games, dude? And I'm like, I'm never going to give up the video games. <laughs> He's like, you do understand though, right? That- those four hours, eight hours, two hours, like those are hours you could be putting into, you know, bettering your craft or bettering yourself or making more money. And that was like the selling point for me was like, okay, Mm -hmm. hmm, if I really did put the console down, stop playing, did I have the discipline? See, to- your ex-girlfriend, she didn't do it right. She did it. She should have yeah. sold it better. Yeah, yeah. she Hey, honey, I look, I, I love the fact that you play video games. It's, I think it's really cool. But, God, you know, for, for these eight hours, imagine if you were just running you know, another job. To, doing another business. But anyways, yeah. I'll see you later. Yeah. You know, just drop the ball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's what he did. Keep he got, doing what you're doing. He got me to look at it like that, and I thought, you know, okay, let's see. And, and that's actually around the same time. So it was around 25, 26 when I talk about I started reading a lot more. And I did. It changed. It changed my life. So I've learned to look at like building business and and watching watching that stuff as uh, more of a hobby than playing mm. the video games. And that was a transition for me wow. a- away from that. So I haven't really played like that 
so this weekend, and I got a couple sessions in. Oh, Katrina, funny. yeah, Katrina was really cool about it. She was just like, oh, I just want to give you your time. Yeah, I kind of gave it up after college. Like college was crazy because you had nothing better to do. I mean, you're stuck on campus, and it's like all these dudes were just like, you know, waiting for either practice or working out or you know the next class. And so we just would play. It was either Goldeneye or then Call of Duty came, but we all like would play that together. And like, dude, but after that, I was like, I'm. I just I had I had to make some money. I had to make some some things happen. Yeah, I stopped playing after Street Fighter Two. That was it. Street, Street Fighter, Fighter Two. Yeah, and then I was like, eh, I don't want to play anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of stuff to do, because I know you were saying there's not much to do. Do you see that uh, uh, our governor here, Gavin Newsom, looks oh. like he lifted the stay-at-home orders Isn't in all it? regions of well, California? That, boy, they didn't even wait a, a week for magical, Trump to be going home. Huh? Has a, <laughs> a magical <laughs> shift. Has nothing to do. I'm sure it's not connected to the recall that's happening right no. now. Oh, not thing. at all. No. Not <laughs> yeah, at all. So. What did Doug say? You don't need an inoculation. You need an inauguration. inauguration to solve this? Oh, yeah. No, it's yeah, so that's, funny. Uh, hey, hey, look. Well, I mean, here's the truth. The guy- The is, who came out too, right? They came out and said that- uh, The lockdowns were not oh, very successful. Oh, maybe these statistics were a little different. Well, you know, here was my argument from day one. And I've made this argument on other podcasts, very clear, which is that the, in, the argument for the lockdown was solely based off of preventing infections and nobody looked at any of the unintended consequences which also result in mental illness death which is drug crazy. overdose and crime all that stuff yeah so i'm glad that they're starting to do this i just hope people are still of course yeah. responsible just take away livelihood and then we'll figure it yeah. out but but he but yeah he's got this uh, the recall is getting a lot of signatures so i'm sure that's he's sweating right now do you now. know where oh, it's yeah. at do you know where it's uh, most recently at i don't know but i know it's reached some high numbers i know it's a real well, possibility of getting on a ballot so the wineries in, in all the restaurants like formed this coalition and they just sued him uh, and this was another motivating push to get him to open up the state now, now here's what irritates me is he said now of course he's gonna lie but if, in his statement he's saying it's due to metrics that they're following which they won't release of course <laughs> now, they won't top secret now here's Science. The, you know, the truth is the cases are still sky they're still high very, Wait, are, very aren't high. we at like peak right now well no we were actually coming down quickly oh, but, wait, 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 wait. we were just at a peak like a week ago yeah okay yeah, yeah. so, so then the number is coming now down. it's coming down. Yeah, it is. Oh, interesting. But, but the numbers it's, are still real high. It's so magical. It's, uh, stop, you guys. The, <laughs> the numbers are still high, so it doesn't match, right? It doesn't match with what they said before. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good time. I, I have a buddy. Like, I hope it's too the, damn predictable. So does this mean the gyms are going to reopen? I hope. Yeah. I have a lot of buddies go. that run and Disneyland, let's do this. I oh, think, yeah. Finally. Disneyland. Are they? You think so? You think they'll do the gyms? Everything's open, man. I If they lift the, the if they're lifting everything to stay at home, I don't know what the details are, but I hope the gyms can be allowed to reopen. You know, California, is the, this is the, the birthplace of of the gym business. Yeah. You know, this is where the big chain started. This is where well, it, the whole thing I'm started. I'm not complaining. I'm just happy. You know, it's like finally, like let's let's all try and like move forward. Yeah. And speaking of this uh, of that topic, um I think it was New York, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to look this up. I believe it was New York that just said that oh, DC, sorry, Washington DC. So they just said that overweight Washington, D.C. residents will get priority for the coronavirus vaccine, and that's causing a stir. Wow. Whoa, wait, wait, back that up again? Overweight? Yes. So uh, they're saying uh, that all overweight, so people with a high BMI, I believe over 25. That doesn't fit my I'm healthy not, at any every I know, narrative. I know. Uh, all overweight D.C. residents will get priority for the coronavirus vaccine. Um, and I think it's based off of the data showing that people who are overweight, you know, have some of the highest risks. I mean, I don't care about that. I, well, you know what though? People are angry because I think there's a lot of other people that are saying, Hey, what, what about, about me? me? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, I get it. It's mm -hmm. over 25 BMI over 25, which by the way, I mean, they're at the greatest risk. Well, I think my BMI might be close to that right now. And I don't if you build a lot of muscle, BMI is not a very good indicator. Oh, they're uh, using that, not body fat percentage. No, they're going to test your body. They don't know how to do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You ever get a body fat test from a doctor? Uh, no, it's no. the easiest way to shuttle people through is just go with BMI. Yeah, they just have you stand on the on the scale, hmm. and that's it. But yeah, I think it's causing a, a little bit of a stir. So we'll see what happens. I heard that uh, because a lot of the vaccines have to be stored at such cold temperatures that at some like if they don't use so many, they have to throw a bunch away. So there's a lot that are getting <laughs> wow tossed. Really, that sucks. Yeah, I think it's like the, this this it's not the most efficient uh, system or whatever they're trying to kind of figure all that out so i don't know what's going on with the stock market right now dude it doesn't make sense <laughs> it's just going up yeah 
This is crazy, dude. You could. I feel like you could. You have, could. You could. I honestly. You could have a monkey throw darts, dude. I have like. And we'll pick winners. <laughs> yeah, I look at it as like gambling. Nothing makes right? sense. Like I, I still because I don't think that I. I mean, I get questions all the time on my story, which, by the way, I'm not that. I'm not nowhere near as red on stocks as I am in the housing market. I spend way more time on on that side of the fence than I do mm-hmm. stocks. Stocks for me is like playing craps in Vegas. That's how I look at it. It's like, ah, I've got a little bit of gambling money. Right. Let's I like these companies, whatever. Right now, everything is winning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything is winning. There, there's not a single I don't have any you know it's like the, the under only thing that's underperforming is gold right now, which I thought yeah. for sure was it will it'll it will gold will perform when the stock market goes down. Yeah. That's your hedge. See, I know that's my hedge right on yeah. what, what I've done. But I mean everything is just is going it's, it doesn't make wow. sense. I know that unemployment's still going up and there's still a lot of uh, economic issues that are happening, but yet it's still ballooning. So it's yeah. kind of a weird situation. Well, I'll tell you who's not winning. There was this guy in Mexico who his wife uh, basically was looking through old pictures and found a picture of him with another like skinnier lady that was like attractive. And so she ended up stabbing him multiple times. Don't tell me it was a picture of her. It was her. a picture of her when she was younger. <laughs> Shut the wow. fuck up. Are you kidding me? No, this literally happened, man. What? How wow. crazy is that? Wow. Yeah. She's- what? Yeah. What a psycho. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> she went, yeah. Did he die or did he just? Is he I, okay? I think he they, he lived, but oh, uh, thank he was God, messed up. Yeah, wow. Is he? I hope he divorces. Is he gonna divorce her? I would hope like, so. Oh, man, she really loves me. She <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> she's really passionate. <laughs> she thought I was cheating. I look how much she loves me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, come on. It was her. Yes, it was her. Um, how do you know? Okay, that makes no sense. How do you not know it's a picture of yourself? Uh, maybe Come her on. other personality came out. I don't know. <laughs> She's got multiple personalities. I mean, it's not without- Maybe she already had like suspicions and then was just looking for it so intensively and then like found that picture and was like, this is it. She's ah! like, he definitely has a type. He just wants skinnier yeah. to look kind of like me, this son of a bitch. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to stab him right now. That's crazy. I Confused, thought, jealous go. wife stabs husband after seeing her younger self in photos. Oh. Uh, she's not even that she's not even that oh, like super overweight. She looks like a she's normal old. She looks older she is, woman. She's older, yeah. Wow. That's like, kind of Well, I guess the husband didn't change much, you know? Like if he if he passed his like Yeah, re, like it's a recent like photo. It's a recent photo, yeah. If that's what she thought. Oh. Or maybe she just thought it was like an, an yeah. old old thing that he Speaking changed. of multiple personality, oh, there's this doc I can't remember the name of it. This sucks. I'm sorry everybody for I'm going to hype it up and now you're not going to be able to find it. There was this this documentary on Amazon, I think. Uh, uh, this woman who would study serial killers, and she's comes up with this theory that the the majority of them uh, suffer from multi multi uh, personality uh, syndrome. Oh wow! And she's explaining how it works, and she's showing interviews with a lot of these famous serial killers that she would interview. Is that part of schizophrenia, or is it uh, that's a different? I don't uh, know. I don't yeah. know if they're connected. I kind of feel like we could have guessed that, though, don't you? Uh, you know, that was it was very controversial when that first came out. Really, when she first came out with that. Hmm. because people wanted the the law because here's what happens if you have a, a mental disorder right. you don't get put to death and you don't get thrown in that kind of a jail you go to mental hospital right. and so when you get caught and you're the whatever serial killer who just killed 15 you know college girls the public is going to be pissed and they want your head right. and then you have a doctor coming out and be like hey this he's got multi- multiple personality disorder they're like no execute him and so it was this huge controversy they're saying that she made the whole thing up when you watch it, that she made up this whole thing. Oh, wow. But you see her interviews and her talking with these people. It's so crazy what the mind does. So these people, these serial killers, this is very – so if you're hmm. squeamish, I had, to, I had to change it with Jessica because it really bothers her to watch this kind of stuff. Uh, but I watched them on my own. Well, Courtney loves it. She'll just like eat popcorn. Yeah, murder. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? I, I know. I can't get Katrina yeah. to watch that stuff either. Yeah. Really? She yeah, freaks out. Yeah, Katrina won't watch that stuff. Well, and she has to be in, in the right the mood the and pictures. daytime, and she, we have to have enough time to watch something else afterwards. Well, Courtney's a nurse, and she's probably seen some crazy shit. Totally. So you can't, probably can't shake her. Yeah. Very well, easily. She doesn't like the actual, uh, you know, watching it happen. It's the aftermath. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all the pictures and it's the solving it and all that kind of stuff. Well, so she, so they were showing all this stuff and then she would, talk, she would interview these guys and talk about their childhood. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh, the abuse that they went through as children. And so what happens is, is your mind literally. Uh, creates these alter personalities mm. so that if you're getting abused terribly, that's it right here. They were, they, they were not born evil inside. So this is, what's the name of it, Doug? 
Crazy, not insane. That's it. Crazy, not insane. Really crazy. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. yeah. Show Courtney. She'll love yeah. it, I guess. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I guess when they're getting abused so terribly, and I'm talking about the worst, I can't even talk about half of it because it's so bad, your mind literally makes you gone. So mm. Sal is no longer here. Yeah. Now you are abusing yeah. Mark, some other yeah. personality. Create somebody else to put in front. So they don't even remember it. So yeah. she has to find and talk to this alternate personality. And then the alternate personality come out, voice changes, their demeanor changes, they're sitting differently. It's like that what, M. Night Shyamalan movie. What's that? The Split? or uh, I never watched it. Oh, yeah. It was you know, He had like a hundred different personalities or something yeah, like that. Yeah, right? dude. Was that good? Like an old lady. Then he was like this like animal mm. kind of uh, character. Dude, and, oh, yeah, it was I'm telling creepy. you, this, this, this crazy, not insane documentary is just, it shook me. Yeah, it's really, really. Did crazy. either one of you guys watch the fights this weekend? I saw the highlights. Just, just heard yeah. about it. No, yeah. did you watch it? I saw uh, the memes of McGregor look like he's asleep. Yeah, did yeah. You see those? Uh, yeah. yeah, he got he got he got lumped out. up. Yeah, huh? dude, big time. Wow. Yeah. Do you guys think um, he because of his fame and fortune he lost? Yeah. I'm going to use a term here: the eye of the tiger. Uh. Do you think he lost that a little <laughs> bit? <laughs> it's like Rocky Three, dude. Uh, exactly. It's exactly like Rocky III. Thank he got you, soft because, yeah, he got famous. all famous and, like, yeah, he probably didn't train the same way. He wasn't uh, putting that kind of intensity in it. I guarantee that's, that's well, a Well, I mean, it's kind of hard to. What, what I, do you know, Doug, what he got paid? Can you check the purse on that? Like, I don't think it was, obviously, it was nowhere near when he did Mayweather, right? So, yeah. hard to get up for a fight that is. You know, significantly less than the fight before. Not to mention, and, now, the, and Dustin Poirier is a killer, right? Yeah. I think so. I think the strategy was from what I from what I heard from my cousins. That's our uh, boys' guy too. Uh, who? Phil Darius guy. Oh, That's it right. is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, he did. So I guess the strategy yeah, five million, bro. Yeah, compared to his hundred million. That's only going to get him five watches. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, so from what, I, yeah, but you know what? We don't know what he's making from the pay per view. Is that just this? Well, pay? his whiskey probably makes that in a month. Yeah. So, so apparently the strategy was this is according to what my cousin told me that Poirier took out his leg, just kept chopping just his chopping leg his down, leg. which he took his leg out that made him a. a did, he, did he actually stitcher. break his leg, or just he was just complaining that it was like? Destroyed? Oh, he was limping. No. He was limping with a cane afterwards. Yeah, yeah, I think he took out his leg to the point where because you know McGregor's so dynamic, right? He moves a lot. Yeah, you take his leg what a out. Smart strategy to take his leg. Yeah. Very smart strategy. Wow. Very very smart. But remember that quote in Pumping Iron when Arnold is? I think he's going for a sixth title, hmm. and one of the guys goes, "Hey, you know Arnold the." The 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 wolf climb the wolf on the hill is not as hungry as the wolf climbing the hill. Yeah, and Arnold goes, yeah, but he, when when he wants the food, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, I feel like you okay. You you make a hundred million on a fight before you, this one. You're getting paid five million, so it's kind of like chump change to you. He's not that motivated, and he beat him before, didn't and he? you he did. and you already won, so you know that even if you lose, your bigger payday will be on he part set up three. on the trilogy part three. So I mean, like, why not roll into it with you know? Okay, training and kind of an whatever. You think he I, might have done this as a weight money strategy? Like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go in. Come and if on, I lose, you're we'll talking about you're talking about one of probably one of the smartest money guys yeah. in the UFC ever. It's hard to pride? think somebody like that would go in going for a, an L. Okay, though. so I don't think he was going for an L, but I think yeah. you just kind of have the no, attitude. He was loose about it. You have nothing to lose. Yeah. You're you're not gonna make that much money, you know, win or lose in it. You know that if you do lose, part three is gonna get a, a much bigger payday than one or yeah. two. Okay, you that. already made a hundred million, so why not go into it with eh, where I'm at? Let's see how I do. Let's see if I can still win, beat this guy where I'm at. Then you could be all cocky, like you barely even worked very hard to get here. Hmm. Or if you lose, you set up the table for the trilogy. Uh, That's well, my theory. Maybe I yeah, I, yeah, I don't I, know. There's something there. I feel like I experienced this myself. In jiu-jitsu, I didn't compete a ton of times, but I did compete enough to experience the change in my motivation and drive after a loss versus after winning. Yeah. I, I, I I remember when I went to a tournament and I just lost, and I was so driven afterwards. And then oh, I remember yeah. I went to another tournament where I won, and it's like I lost my I lost my drive because Ugh, it, it didn't feel losing. the same. Yeah. Hated it. Dude, dude, my whole college career in football was just a, a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> just L we after lost so L many L. damn games, dude. Yeah. I was just so pissed off all the time. Was it your fault? Yeah, I'm just, and nobody had that <laughs> same like, you know, sting. Like it, 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 to me that 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 shows like whether or not you're going to be like a championship kind of team if you like yeah. really take that loss as a sting and it's like fuck, like we can't let that happen. Again. Not going to let that do. Not, not going to do. Did that you again. have any time to watch any of the, the football games this weekend? I did. Oh, I, you did. Yeah, yeah. So how about how about Brady coming oh, through? Oh, bro. So yeah. this is like he's, an, he's such a chance. This is an ongoing like debate. Like my isn't he my, old now? Yeah, he's, oh, yeah, he's, he's old. Russian, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Bro, he, he takes his team his first year. 
all the way to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and, you know it's crazy. It's a constant debate. In, so among, I have a, an uncle who's like a just radical diehard Niner fan, and yeah. Joe Montana felt like nobody is better than Joe Montana. Yeah. Nobody is better than Joe Montana, and he yeah. has all the ways to try and prove that. Yeah, that fact. Even though Brady keeps fucking, but it's leapfrogging all these stats. Yeah. You know, say like, come on, dude, it's getting to a point. You gotta you gotta call him the goat sooner or later, and he just refuses. Then right. I have another buddy who's the same way too. That everybody used to argue that Tom Brady is a system quarterback. That Bill Belichick and the the Patriots had such a. I've heard that argument so many times. Right, and so I, I love to see that he did this. I love that he went, you know, to the Bucks, and then the first year be able to take them all the way to the championship because it kind of gets that monkey off his back. Everybody, the dude, listen to this. So the next quarterback to have played in as many Super Bowls is Joe Montana at seven. He has fourteen. Yeah. Or 10, no, excuse me, 10, 10 Super Bowls, 14 NFC Championship games. Wow. Okay. That's fucking it's insane. insane. Dude. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah no, you got to recognize I still yeah. think Joe Montana's better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I like him better, but it's what are you going to do? The only time I watch football. Did you guys see the video that's going viral right now of the uh, gymnast, the floor gymnast that uh, from UCLA that put the, the she played, she did a, a whole routine to uh, Tupac and- I did. Did you see that? Exceptional. It was really good. Exceptional. Huh? It's going, it. Yeah, it's going viral right now. It just happened, like I think, this weekend. And because she did it to Kendrick Lamar and Tupac, so it's like oh, to this. Wow. Yeah, but, and she crushed it, so it's going crazy. I, you know, my, my feed just flooded with Bernie Sanders memes. It's like, it's like, <laughs> I'm over it now. Die? I'm over it yeah, now. It was hilarious, though, for the first few days. He looks so miserable. And I was sitting there with his mittens. Just, mm. yeah, I know. <laughs> it, it almost, well, it did epitomize like the mood, you know, of like everybody like over the last year or so. Just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but Bernie got leapfrogged twice. It was the second time they fucked him. Yeah. That's why. I know. Well, it's just, yeah. So you guys don't like me. I sit over here by, my, by myself. <laughs> you know, gy- gymnastics is the is the I'd say of all the sports is always the one that impresses me the most. It's the one that I always watch and I always think to myself, how is that even possible? Yeah, like the, the especially the tumbling acts, how the height that they're able to launch themselves in the air. Yeah, it it looks like. It doesn't make any it's just sense. Amazing feats of body movement. It, and you can't even like it, you can't even fathom replicating that. I told you guys when I trained I, for a short period of time. I trained this thirteen-year-old gymnast, and she was a very high level. I don't remember her name. I only trained her for like four workouts, mm-hmm. but it sticks in my head because she was this tiny little thing. She walked around like she was just made out of pure muscle. I remember like, holy shit, what is this? And the dad's like, hey, can you teach her a few exercises? She doesn't really do. She's never done weights before. I'm like, sure. And I remember I had her, you know, do pull up. I'm like, can you do pull ups? She goes, oh yeah, yeah. I said, can I see how you do pull ups? And this is this is literally the speed at which she did pull ups. I was like, just and, and her face, <laughs> her face didn't change. Like she didn't like. It was like, yeah. like all day, all day long. Yeah, like like she's watching TV. Yeah. And I remember thinking like, this does not make any sense. I remember when she benched. Remember this is a 13 year old girl. She benched. And I think there was like 120 pounds on the bar. What? And it, yeah. Wow. In the whole gym, everybody was like, what is going on? Uh, I was like, this makes me feel terrible. Not, I mean, not myself. to take anything from gymnasts, because I think you're right. I think it's unbelievable. But I feel that way about like X game athletes, because I think it's it's the combination of that type of you know, ability to flip and oh, turn and fearless. Turn. Yeah. And you're yeah. doing it like 80 miles an hour on a, on a, <laughs> on a, like a, if you mess yeah, up your desk, the stakes are yeah, yeah, like much a higher. 8% grade <laughs> mountain going straight down. Like that's crazy to yeah, me. Yeah. That's a whole nother level though. Yeah. yeah. Did you see that video of the, what are those wingsuits called that people will fly oh, in? Oh, like they are wingsuits. Yeah, yeah. I think it's called okay. a wingsuit. Okay. So, you know, people die in those all the time. That's you know, the most dangerous thing. Yeah. Have you ever watched the documentary they have on Yeah. There? Like at the end of it, like yeah. seven of the 10. There's only like two guys left. Yeah. Yeah. Did you watch the, one where the guy did the wingsuit, he jumped out of one plane and 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 landed in, and went inside of another plane while it was flying. What? Get out of yeah. here! Yeah, they left the door open, and so he he fell out of one plane and he's and he made it inside of another plane. What? Does, people have no idea Dude, how dangerous what? that is. And they didn't like put that in some major motion picture. They just did that for shits and giggles. I I, I think it might have been Red Bull, but he, he I mean he just made it inside of a plane. That's way too crazy, dude. Bro, that's like throwing a pin through. Uh, it's like throwing. I don't know. No, I can't even explain. You mentioned Red physics. Bull. What, what the, what, talk about the brilliance of a company like that to attach itself to all these up-and-coming extreme sports yeah. before anybody did. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody was paying attention to the, those sports. They test their name to every viral video possible. Exactly. Yeah, that way. They, so. it, absolutely brilliant. Exactly. Because their shit is so overpriced. Like You can get like a, little, like a little Red Bull drink. <laughs> like, it's like three, four bucks, dude. That's yeah. crazy. I still, hey, I still stand by the original. I had the original Thai Red Bulls. They were these little glass bottles. I tried really? And they were not carbonated, and they were sweeter, and they were strong. 
Oh, yeah? Yeah, my buddy used to bring them from Thailand. He was a Thai boxer, and he'd bring me like a case of them. They were totally, I never found them here. Uh, were they, like, were they, so super sweet and like syrupy? Or, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. And it was like a little glass vial like this. It uh, almost looked I illegal. bet it was powerful, too. Hella yeah. strong. Yeah. I used to take them before I worked out. Yeah, yeah. And I have the great, the best workouts. Hey, crazy. Doug, I had a question I wanted to ask you. You uh, Last time you and I talked off air, I was telling you what my brother-in-law did with the uh, cooking the meat. How right. He, did you try that yet? I did. I did a sirloin cap. So what I did is I took uh, it and put it into the sous vide. I think it was 130 I had it at. I did it for probably about six or seven hours. Okay. And then what I did is I put it into an ice bath afterwards to oh. cool it down. Okay. And then I fired up my Traeger and I cooked it over there on the smoke setting for I don't remember how long until the temperature went back up to the medium rare. And then I ate it. Was Delicious. It, it was like a bar- I, barbecue I'm going to tell you, over here. the meat was so incredibly tender. Oh. Amazing. Oh, you always make the best meat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> make the best meat. Everybody Ooh. relax. It's, but hey, speaking of meat, uh, Butcher Box, I don't know how they do this, by the way. Did what? you see their giveaway? No. If you sign up for Butcher Box right now, here's what you get. Doug listed up there because there's a lot of stuff. One rack of St. Louis style ribs, one pack of bacon, and a pack of pulled pork free included wow. in, your, in your first box. So every That's time, a hookup, every time they do that, you end up getting like three or four pounds of like meat. Yeah, just such a good deal. All the meat you need. Yeah, was the cap a, was the cap from them also too? Yes. Oh, it mm-hmm. was. Oh, I'm gonna have to try that. Their their tri tips really good. Mm-hmm. They actually have a tri tip now, which is uh, which is really good. Yeah. Uh, you know what, Adam? I do want to say this about uh, uh, your dog right there. It's sleeping. He's so cute. He um he does something now, and I've observed him doing this now at least ten times. Yeah. <laughs> he if he's sitting there, he's sitting over there. It doesn't matter where he's at. He'll mosey over to Justin and fart. Yeah, he and just then looks up away. at me. I don't pet him. He turns, you know, and faces the other direction. Just, just crop dusty. Yeah, just, yeah. He, he just just, just Justin. He doesn't <laughs> do it to like, me, dude. Doesn't do it to anybody else, but Justin. Yeah. Yeah, you guys complain, but I think it's a good thing. It disguises your own farts. <laughs> Which, by the way, the other day, Justin <laughs> thought the dog was here when the oh, dog wasn't here. Yeah, he wasn't here when I needed him. We're out of the gym. We're out of, oh, we're yeah, out of, we're out of the studio. We're in the uh, gym. Yeah. And we're all sitting there. Yeah. And Justin j- just rips a big one. It just so happens to be is right when Jerry. It was just really audible. Yeah, because you know, the way I was sitting, like, it just it came out. Like I thought it was going to be, you know, just the past. No big deal. It was just it's boom. That was some thunder. He was sitting on the bench. Yeah. Sideways. Yeah. So his, his cheeks were. Hanging well, off cheeks the back. hanging off, dude. <laughs> so it, just, it just had like it was the perfect, mass vibrato. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like a trombone. And then poor Jerry was yeah. walking by, yeah, yeah, just, and I'm like, no, yeah, Jerry, like, close your mouth. Of <laughs> yeah, he's poor, always poor Jerry. He's always complaining that we like created this fake stereotype of him, but he always reinforces. Well, it. Just, <laughs> every now and then, I gotta let it show. You know, like I, like, I do own it. First question is from Jay Rosen. Ten, explain isometric exercises. How would you use them in a workout? All right. So uh, probably one of the most valuable yet underutilized uh, techniques in training, I would say, yes. um, is training isometrics. So uh, you could loosely categorize, um, I guess, repetitions or how muscles contract three different ways, right? So there's the positive portion of a rep, the concentric. That would be like me curling a bar. That's a muscle contraction. Then there's an eccentric or the lowering of the bar, muscle contraction. So that would be me dro- bringing the bar down with a curl. And then isometric is essentially just holding steady, right? Mm-hmm. So a muscle's holding a weight steady or right. supporting something stationary. Maximal contraction, but you're not uh, moving at all. Right. Now, this produces, first off, the strength gains you get tend to be relatively specific, meaning if I only train concentric or I only train eccentric or I only train isometric, I get a lot of strength gains in that one thing that I train, but there's so much carryover. Mm-hmm. This is where it gets fun. Isometric training does not damage the body, definitely not as much as eccentric, which is probably the most damaging, and not as much as concentric, which is still more damaging. So isometric is a great way to add volume without causing uh, lots of damage. The other thing that it does is it turns on the central nervous system really, really well. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the ways that I, I have always used uh, isometric training as a trainer was when I had a client who had trouble feeling a muscle yes. or firing a muscle. So if I had a client who's like, man, when I do squats, uh, it's all quads. I get no activation in my butt. That's what I'm trying to build. Then we would do like an isometric squeeze uh, before the squat, and that would give them the ability to start to feel it um, in the glutes, almost like turning on the glutes. In that case, 
you would just I would put them in a squeeze position. I'd have provide a little bit of resistance, and I'd have them hold the squeeze for hard for ten seconds or something like that. So that's one way uh, to do it. I yeah. used to, I used to use it too, where I you uh, I would take a client and I'd I'd get them to whether it be a bench press, a curl, anything, and I'd get them to hold it in that position, and then I would actually move their body. Like, because a lot of times when someone's doing an exercise, even as simple as a bicep curl, I mean, how many times have you seen somebody, you try to teach a bicep curl, you show them, and then they try and do it, and then their, their shoulders roll forward, they rock, they right. do all these things, no matter how many times you say the cues. Mm -hmm. So sometimes what I would do is I, I'd take the, you know, like say, let's say the curl, and they go up ha the halfway point, and then I would come over, then I'd actually hold that, and then I'd go walk behind them, pull their shoulders back, tuck their chin in, mm -hmm. and be like, this is the position I want right. you in while you're in this, while you're feeling this contraction. Same thing for like a bench press. I would get them down in that deep position, get them to pull their shoulder blades back, hold it. So I love it for teaching technique and form, Yeah, I too. love that same thing, uh, you know, addressing weak points in whatever part of the, the movement. Like, if you're trying to then add, you know, a, a performance enhancement, so where the performance leaks, where you lose a bit of, uh, you know, this tension in the muscle that's supportive. So when, when the body recognizes that you're not fully stabilized in a certain range of motion or a position, it's not going to allow for you to get as much force mm -hmm. uh, to create. So uh, it really is a performance enhancing type of a method too, if you apply it uh, directly like that. And also there's there's a 15 sort of degree uh, uh, carryover in terms of like how the strength sort of uh, translates like up or down from that angle too. So it gets affected, uh, you know, from that angle gets affected 15 degree radius on both sides. Yeah. So for an example, for what you're talking about, Justin, uh, if you would apply this, let's say the bottom position of a squat is where you're the weakest, which is quite common. Then what you might do is an isometric squat in the bottom position. There's a couple ways you could do this. The more advanced way to do this would be to set the safety bars so that the bar that you're squatting pushes up against the safeties. And then what you do is you get in position, and you got to make sure you have really, really good uh, stabilization. Really, really, because you, if you have bad uh, position here, then you're going to do an isometric with bad technique. Mm -hmm. So good form, good technique. Squat up with the bar and push into the safeties really hard but stay stable. And what that'll do is make you stronger in, or, or it'll work on increasing strength in that bottom position. But then to what Justin said, you get that 15 degree carry over. So let's say it was 90 degrees that you were doing the squat. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be at you know 80, uh, 75 degrees or plus 15 degrees uh, from from 90. So 105, right? Yeah, I just want to add one more because like I I'm definitely have been passionate and been studying a lot about uh, isometric training. Uh, there's also an, an analgesic effects. So there's there's a pain relieving effect to uh, also like applying isometric tension, uh, you know, throughout the body to stabilize around the joints. So if somebody has knee pain or uh, you know has lost a bit of uh, stability, uh, you know, just, just taking that time to go through an exercise where we're focusing on squeezing and connecting and stabilizing around the joint is it's, it's a pain relieving uh, technique as well. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. What is it that's causing it to do that? Is it just firing all the surrounding muscles around that joint because it's, you're doing it like it has like a, like it radiates out. Is it's, that like the idea? Like it's if I actually, it's actually similar to myofascial release when you push hard on a muscle and you get this mm -hmm. kind of local localized analgesic effect. Uh -huh. um, you get that with uh, with isometrics. There's a, there's a localized and then there's also the kind of the sy systemic effect. You know what's interesting about this is that it, this was such a huge training tool back in the day. When you look at like strong men, strength athletes from, you know, I'd say before the 1940s, this was a, a mainstay in their routine. This is one of, and one of the reasons is because a lot of these strong men, uh, they, you know, bodybuilding shows weren't a thing really back then. That didn't become a thing till a little bit later. So what these these people would do is they would do these performances where they would balance tremendously heavy weights above their head often, or in maybe a bent press position, or they would do a hip bridge and they'd have like a table and, and they'd you know drive a motorcycle on it and stuff like that. So they would train a lot of uh, isometrics to have that kind of strength uh, and stability. You could still see this in acrobats. If you ever watch uh, like circus performers where there's two, you ever see those those acts where there's like two guys mm -hmm. and one guy's holding the other guy up with right. one hand? That's tremendous isometric strength. Yeah. Uh, and this is a wonderful Crazy thing body control. to develop. It teaches your central nervous system to really turn on. I mean, to give you an example of, of what I'm talking about, if you were to squeeze like a something that measured your grip strength, but you were squeezed as hard as you could with your right hand, but kept the rest of your body relaxed, you would only get so strong. If you did it again, but tensed up your entire body, you would actually produce more force. This mm -hmm. is a this is a central nervous system 
um, you, know, you know, factors. This, this is the CNS being able to fire better. Isometrics at the beginning of a workout done properly can actually increase your stability and performance during the workout. So for strength athletes, applying them properly, don't fatigue yourself, but applying them properly at the beginning of the workout will make you stronger and more stable during the workout. For the bodybuilder types, for people interested in hypertrophy, use them as finishers. Bodybuilders have done this for years. They didn't call it isometrics. They said posing. Yeah, they pose, yeah. Yeah, they'd say, oh, at the end of my chest routine, I like to pose my chest and squeeze it yeah. for- Bruce Lee used to uh, <laughs> you know, promote this quite a bit, too. Oh, he was, he was well known for it. In fact, there's- uh, He'd do it in between sets, even. Yeah, and there, was, uh, there were stories of him uh, being able to balance a 100-pound dumbbell at arm's length. You know, He couldn't bench press a lot, but he had this incredible isometric strength because he said it, it helped him punch- yeah. with more more uh, stability or whatever. So beginning of the workout for performance and strength, end of the workout uh, for hypertrophy or, you know, like as bodybuilders say, as a finisher. Next question is from Pat of Blanc. What are your thoughts on DNA fitness and nutrition tests, the ones that reportedly tell you the optimal way for you to eat and train? This is like the uh, like blood type stuff, you know? Yeah. yeah. I You know, here's why I'm not a fan. Um, It'd be great if, like, we could just pull formulas and it worked completely, right? It just, okay, there's so many factors yeah. on an individual basis that on a, uh, determine only, how hard to work out. Not even individual do. basis, on a daily individual basis. Oh, yeah. Like, that's, like yeah. you can get tested for something that tells you train this way. And maybe it's extremely accurate, but one night of bad sleep, one night or three days of under consuming calories, three days of overtraining completely changes totally all that. Different right, animal. right. Plus DNA we know now is not as fixed as we thought before. It can actually express itself differently depending on your lifestyle. So I, I mean, what's the term that the that DNA uh, loads the bullets, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't remember the term. Uh, there's a there's a term for it where you can uh, epigenetics. Epigenetics. Thank you, yeah. Doug. So your lifestyle can affect that as well. Here's my experience with this kind of stuff. I, I, I had clients who were you know very successful, wealthy. They were always on the cutting edge, and they would do these tests, and then I would notice it affect their decision making when they train. Like they would stop listening to their body. Well, my DNA test said that you know I respond well to high intensity training, so. That's what I'm going to continue doing. Or my DNA test said these foods are probably best for me, even though they're ignoring the fact that they're getting gastro issues or digestive issues uh, as a result. Uh, listen to your body is, is the best advice I can give. Now, here's where I think it might be valuable for people who are very in tune with their bodies, people who are self-aware, maybe very advanced. Then it can give you a little bit of insight, uh, but you got to use it properly. Otherwise, you end up like, you know, like we're saying – you go into your workouts, you go into your diet, and you're, you tend to be blind. Oh, it says I'm supposed to eat low carb, high fat. Uh, you know, I know I feel like shit, but that's what my DNA test says, so I'm just going to continue, continue doing that. Well, what's the, what's the saying that you always say that a, a, um, an inferior program done consistently is, is better than the superior program done inconsistently? That's another one. Right? Yeah. So it's like, um, you know, could this be – like maybe this is like maybe this is cutting edge stuff that we are we're, – uh, we're learning more and more and it does have some value, right? Um, it still doesn't trump that. It still doesn't trump you being consistent with everything else. Somebody who is being consistent with their training and dieting is going to be better than the, the guy or the girl who follows some DNA protocol for three weeks and then is inconsistent for another week, right? Yeah. So You know why that's important to, to say, Adam, is because let's say you're somebody that uh, you do your DNA. I'm going to make something up. I'm sure they don't say this, but I'll make it up. And your DNA test says the best form of cardio for you is sprinting. This is the kind of cardio you should do. But you love swimming. You absolutely love swimming. But you're like, you know what my DNA test, and you hate sprinting, but you're like, I'm going to do what my DNA test says. And I'm going to do this form of exercise I hate. Right. As a result, you become inconsistent because right. you do this form of exercise you absolutely hate in replace of the one that you love that you would probably be more consistent doing. So mm -hmm. I think that's where it's very valuable. Right. That's the same thing that we make the case about, you know, people saying that, uh, you know, because I think there's stuff that's came out now too, like depending on when you were, what time of day you were born, you're more likely to see better results training in the morning versus the really? evening. Really? Yeah, yeah. I've heard this. Yeah, mm. yeah. So that's came out recently, like where, you know, depending on what, what you know, and everybody's different, right? So, but again, none of that matters if this hour in your day is where you can be the most consistent because that's what your schedule allows you to. That is more important than what some test says is the most yeah. optimal for you. It'd be interesting if like, if you could trace back and, and see like the epigenetics of, uh, you know, like what you might be predisposed 
predisposed to, uh, you know, if that was really the case, especially with like nutrition, if you could avoid certain things that like would then, because a lot of times people don't know like what's underlying, uh, you know, that's been passed on, but I just don't know that they've been able to nail all that down. The other thing that's hard about that is to be able to tease out because there's, there's stuff to prove this, right? So any, uh, someone just following a program protocol is going to be more successful than somebody not like Mm -hmm. the whole blood type thing. Oh yeah, totally. I, you know, I read that, I read that book when that was popular and I, it was hard for me to say, okay, are these people having success because they're following their blood type diet? Or they're just following something. Exactly. Because mm-hmm. before they were eating pizza and whatever yeah. and not really paying attention. Then they switched over to this blood type diet. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh my God. Now Adam, I have structure. Yeah. My energy yeah. feels good and this and that. I'm like, okay, well, was it really that? And it's the same thing that goes for when people switch to carnivore or keto or vegan. It's like... Is it really the diet that is making you feel this way? Or maybe or you it, cut out this food. Right, or yeah. that you got rid of something that was an offender to your body before and now you feel so much better, yeah, so and, it's hard to tease that and out. And you know what's happening with these DNA tests is that people are getting, because there's there are some DNA, uh, like there are some results that will come out that will say, you are very likely for to get this type of cancer. I think there's one, I think it's called the BRAC mm. uh, gene or whatever that can show, I think it puts you at like 80% uh, chance of getting breast cancer. But then there's other stuff that says you are predisposed to this or predisposed to that. And then you might have an uncle or an aunt who had that particular thing. You know what I've been reading that's happening is that people will get these tests and then it freaks them out. Mm. Then they're stressed out. They're so worried. Oh, yeah. Then they take these these steps that they didn't they didn't need to take to you know help themselves and actually cause themselves more problems. Mm-hmm. This reminds me of the studies that show that you know men respond to intensity better than women and women respond better to volume. But here's the deal: as a trainer, the, the when I train the individual, I don't care. I'm right. watching the person, right. and if the person does well doing something, that's what we're going to do. I don't care what the studies say. I don't care what the general idea is. If you do better doing this thing and it's working for you, this is what we're going to do. Next question is from Tad Mills. What are your opinions on the multi-grip bars for benching? I don't have a lot of experience with these, Justin. Have you used? Yeah, I've used them. I, I mean, I like it. It's. It's interesting. It's a different feel. Like with with that uh, sort of a neutral grip, uh, you know, and then coming in for a narrow. I like it a lot for like narrow grip bench pressing, mm. uh, which I've used it for before. Um, but really, it's just a slightly different recruitment pattern. You know, I could focus a little bit more on my triceps. You know, for instance, with a narrow grip. But uh, you know, I, I just look at it as, a, as as another way to like provide a different type of a stimulus. But that's about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel the same way about yeah. it. It's I think it's neat. It's a neat. Yeah. I mean, there's so many cool bars and stuff that are out now. I mean, you just recently brought in the uh, what you call bison bar. Yeah, yeah, the bison bar. Like, and you know, I don't get a chance to squat with it very often. It was fun to squat with it. Like. Do I necessarily think that it's necessary or it's like so much better than the the straight bar that it's like, oh, this is the the answer? It's like, no, I think it's a cool way to vary. If you're training a lot, right, You tra- and you've been training consistently for a long time, I think these are all cool tools. Yeah. I don't think it's the, the difference maker of you building this amazing chest because mm-hmm. you've got a bar where you can change uh, yeah. the position. I think your- people get really pumped on it when they've had like wrist issues, or, for instance, and like, you know, maybe this is a way that they could put their wrist in sort of a better position where they feel like it's secure and stable. Uh, yeah. You know, and that might be some value to that, but um, yeah, like it's just a different thing. Well, I could see that with the close grip because one of the, the well, challenges yeah, you, with the close grip is the angle on the wrist. Yeah, you got to right. break your you either got to break your wrist or it just feels really weird the way you're especially flared, at the bottom. Where right. if you get to do close grip, you can turn it in a neutral position. Yep. It's it's a, a lot more comfortable. Yeah, the reason why I've never messed with these is because uh, I've always done that with dumbbells. So if I wanted oh, my right. if I wanted my wrist neutral, and here's why changing the wrist helped. Gives you uh, maybe different results than uh, than you know d- with other exercises. It's not necessarily the wrist, but rather where the elbows follow. Mm-hmm. So when I have my my wrists in this neutral position, it more naturally makes my elbows bringing a little closer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You so can I'm, pull it in. Yeah, I'm going to get more shoulder recruitment. I'm going to get a little bit more tricep uh, recruitment. So I've just done it with dumbbells. So I've done that. I've done incline and flat presses with my wrist neutral elbows in versus, you know, elbows out, you know, kind of body. So I'm with Justin. I like it for that reason, because you're right. When you, when you do a close grip bench press, which I love to do for triceps, you have a, you have a bit of an elbow flare, yeah. which mm-hmm. it would you would get more tricep involved if I could be in the neutral position and tuck my elbows mm-hmm. in. So that bar allows you to do that. Next question is from Sonia Grewal zero one. What would you do when you do not feel like eating let me start over here. <laughs> <laughs> 
What should you do when you do not feel like eating or are not hungry but still need to maintain your caloric intake? Okay, so without knowing too much more uh, or more information about this person, I'm going to assume you're a healthy individual um, because there could be some psychological stuff. I've had this with female clients in particular where I'm trying to get them to eat an appropriate amount of calories, Mm -hmm. and they just psychologically- There's a block there. They're afraid of gaining weight. But let's just say you're a healthy person- and your body's like, I'm not hungry. Okay, step number well, first number one, I would say listen to your body. Okay, forcing your body in one direction or another usually means it's probably not the best for your body. But let's say you've got these really hardcore goals, uh, you know, and you and you do have and when you have really really specific goals, sometimes you do need to push your body a little bit. I would say the first thing I would do is look at what I'm eating and seeing if it's causing any digest digestive issues. Because eating more calories, if you're eating foods that you are intolerant to and they cause bloat uh, or gas or acid reflux, um, those foods are going to make it hard for you to continue to eat uh, more calories. So I would go more to the fast digesting, easy digestive types of foods. For me, that would be beef and rice and well-cooked vegetables. I could eat a lot of those. Potatoes. Potatoes, uh, to some extent, if I push those too hard, that would cause me to bloat. Wheat. Definitely not. That would make me not want to eat again because I tend to have digestive issues with wheat. So that would be the first thing uh, that I would say. Um, but there's other strategies too. Like if you've been bulking for a long time, uh, like a, a few days of low calories typically would jump you right I was, back on. That's where I was going to go, right? So my one, it depends, right? Like who we're talking to because there's there's a lot of different ways I think I would communicate this based off of what your goal is. But something I think that has changed for me personally today that was different than maybe just – seven, eight years ago as a personal trainer. Um, I don't, I, so you, this happened to me yesterday. Yesterday, uh, I had, uh, what did I have for breakfast? I can't remember what I had for breakfast. I think I had in my, my staple right now, which is Pop like four, no, four, <laughs> four <laughs> eggs, sourdough toast and, and then bacon. And then I didn't eat again till late at that night. And it was like chicken soup. That was literally like all I ate that night. In the past, I would freak out about that. In the past, because I was so hung up on getting enough calories and eating enough food and fear of losing muscle that I would run downstairs and eat a bag of popcorn, ice cream, whatever, anything just to get calories so I didn't lose, right? That where my attitude towards that now is like like you just alluded to, Sal, is if I've been eating uh, you know ample amount of calories for three, four, five, or a week or two weeks in a row, having a day of super low, cal- even a couple days of really low mm-hmm. calorie will probably do me some good. And so I don't really worry about it too much. So it really depends where this client is at with their eating. Do, I mean, if you're consistently eating in a surplus because you're trying to gain, and then you have one day where you're just like, man, I'm just not hungry. I'm not feeling like it. That's I love to go low. Go low that day because watch the next day, your appetite will probably be kicking kick up. I think that's the thing I would caution my client who I give this advice to. So if I tell my client, Hey, don't worry about you know eating, hitting the calorie intake. You know you've been doing gr- really good. One low calorie day is not going to hurt us whatsoever. What I'd caution them is be careful because you went so low today. Tomorrow you might feel these crazy cravings and have the temptation to want to go eat outside of your meal plan. So that's the one thing that I would caution somebody who I'd say don't worry about one day of not hitting your calorie into a target is the next day you may find yeah. your cravings. Now, if you're that like classic hard gainer, right? If you're that person that's just metabolism is roaring, you're skinny, it's, you find it very hard to gain any weight um, and you're, you're really dedicated to doing this, um, drinking some of your calories. Yeah, I was going to uh, say smoothies or shakes. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, if you can tolerate dairy, like this, is, here's an easy way to add 500 calories to your diet. Drink a glass of whole milk with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I mean, I'll, I'll, gain, I'll put some nice calories, give you some extra protein, and it doesn't fill you up nearly as much uh, as food will. But, um, but again, I think for the average person, you got to listen to your body. I think when you mm. push your body uh, too hard in one direction or another, and you're ignoring your body's signals, uh, the, the detriments outweigh any positives you might get from the extra calories. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio, so come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam. And finally, if you'd like some free information on how to build bigger arms, how to get a better squat, build a nice butt, uh, develop your midsection, we have a bunch of free guides you can find at mindpumpfree.com. Now, the next one, this one I do with my kids, which are scheduled breaks, and I'll let them know ahead of time. Hey, you guys, 15 more minutes, and then we're going to be off electronics for the next 
two hours. I think this is important to have scheduled breaks, to let yourself know if you're really deep in the social media addiction thing, if you, you don't have any very good boundaries with social media, rather than you know 